Hello my darlings and welcome back to a new fashion video. I feel like I'm getting back in the swing of doing the Sunday fashion videos now. I'm not going to lie, I do feel as though I dropped the ball, I lost my mojo a little bit over winter and this video in many ways is me kind of kickstarting myself to pick it up again, revitalize my own sense of style and really just Start putting together outfits that feel like they suit not only my lifestyle but also my personal style because I'm sure I'm not the only one that over lockdown and over winter it's just so easy to get into those habits of literally wearing the same leggings and a jumper every single day. Am I right? I'm hoping I'm not the only one, I'm sure that I'm not. But now that we are starting to creep slowly but surely towards spring, I really just want to give my wardrobe a huge refresh, not by buying loads of new stuff, but, but really styling the pieces that I already own in a way that's a little bit more fresh for spring and really hone in on those style rules that before COVID, before lockdown, I would really live by. So I guess this video is going to be my tips for how to be more stylish and revitalize your wardrobe for spring. This is going to be a journey. This is not me telling you. This is hopefully just us learning together. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you're wondering what I've done to my hair, <laughs> I am going through a hair journey as well as a style journey. I am very late to the party. Didn't realize that it was trending on TikTok two years ago, but I finally decided to try heatless curls. I'm always up for anything that saves me time and also saves me from frazzling my hair. So I have been trying heatless curls. This is my second ever attempt and my first attempt with sleeping in, did I say sleepless curls? Heatless curls. Um, this was my first attempt at sleeping in the heatless curl magic silk sausage and I quite like it but I think I, I still need more practice but um, yeah if you're thinking Josie you look like you've <clears throat> been dragged through a hedge backwards <laughs> and that's why but yeah by summer hopefully we will have perfected the heatless curls. I will leave the set that I'm using linked down below as well as everything else of course that I am wearing and talking about in today's video. Oh and darlings if you are new to the channel, then hello and welcome. I hope you'll join me for more fashion videos and vlogs. I do two vlogs every single week on Tuesdays and Thursdays and a fashion video every single Sunday. So please do subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more from me. <laughs> Alrighty, so just a very quick overview of my main kind of fashion rules, I guess you could say, before we get started into the main tips of the video. I would say that overall, I prefer to buy less pieces but buy better pieces. You won't find a whole load of fast fashion here on my channel. I used to do a lot of hauls and because of my job I do still bring in quite a lot of new pieces to my wardrobe, far more than the typical person should um, bring in and far more than I need to bring in. It's just a perk of the job But I do tend to invest in higher price pieces rather quality over quantity Basically, I would say buying less but buying better is one of the most important things for me in my wardrobe I would far rather have one or two really beautiful premium cashmere knits than say ten more affordable um, polyester jumpers. That's just generally what I kind of go by. I would say that my style overall is quite classic, very feminine, elegant and timeless. Those are the kind of key words that I would say apply to my wardrobe. As I live in the countryside, everything does need to be fairly practical, but I still like to bring in my feminine style to these practical and comfortable outfits. So that's uh, a bit of a scene setting scenario for you. So although it's not the new year, I do kind of see spring as really the start of the fashion year. It's when I start to get really excited about my wardrobe. So I guess you could say that these tips are kind of like your new year, new season um, resolutions. And my first one, my first tip resolution or whatever you like to call it, is to not buy something just for one occasion. That is something which to me just makes absolutely no sense. Something else which is really important to me is price per wear. Gosh, it feels like it's been a while since I mentioned that. Josie is back <laughs> with the fashion slogans. Price per wear is really important to me. And what that means is when I invest in something, I like to figure out how often I'm going to wear it. And obviously the more times I'm gonna wear it, the better. And this also helps me to justify a higher price point item. So say for example, this dress was 100 pounds um, and I think I'm going to wear it 10 times, hopefully more, that would be 10 pounds per price per wear. If it was kaleidoscopic, like multicolored, 
I'd probably wear it twice, which is £50 price per wear, which obviously is nowhere near as good. So by choosing pieces which are more versatile that I'm going to get a lot more wear out of, I'm going to get that price per wear down. So that is something that comes into my head every single time I buy something. Now this can be quite tricky with occasion wear in particular. First thing I would say here is look at renting. I actually have started over the past few months listing a lot of my more statement dresses on buy rotation. So if you would like to rent some of my dresses, I'll leave the link to my page down below. I would say if there is an occasion where you want to wear something truly fabulous and it's such a statement piece that you potentially wouldn't wear it again, we need to get it out of our heads. You can only wear a statement piece once or twice because you should be able to wear them loads and loads of times. But if you do want something a little bit more spectacular and really memorable, why not consider renting instead of buying something new for your wardrobe? Something else when it comes to occasion wear that can really help with not buying a piece that you're only going to wear once is of course thinking about the versatility of those items. So I like to try and go for pieces which I know would work really perfectly, say for example for a summer wedding, but then I'm also thinking of other occasions that I could wear it to. Could I wear it for a christening? Could I wear it for a summer... <laughs> Missed my finger. <laughs> could I wear it for a... Could I wear it for a summer garden party? Am I going to any other special events that I could wear it to? And I like to try and pick pieces which will work for multiple occasions. Therefore, again, getting that price per wear down. Once again, going back to this dress, if it was a slightly more informal or relaxed wedding, this would be absolutely perfect. It's all about how you style, how you accessorize these pieces. So if I went for, I'm actually not very good with, um, occasion wear bags. I need to up my um, occasion wear bag game again, perhaps I could look at renting. But with some heels, even with a beautiful floral headband for example, you could really dress a dress like this up for a wedding, or you could pair it down a little bit with something like a little uh, raffia bag. This one is, I think it's Lillian Bean, I just think it's absolutely adorable. A basket bag um, and some sandals, even a straw hat depending on the occasion, but really thinking of ways you can dress something up and dress it down. Have these things in your mind when you're investing in new dresses and then hopefully that'll help you to boost that price per wear. My second style resolution tip on how to be stylish or revitalize your style, gosh, I really need to hone down the title of this video, um, is a kind of obvious one and it is not to buy or keep things that don't fit you. These items, firstly you probably won't ever find yourself actually reaching for them. Only recently I just took the most beautiful dress to um, to the tailor because it was hanging in my wardrobe and every time I had an event that it could work for I'd look at it but then i think, yeah but it doesn't actually fit me properly so I'll go for something else and I'd never wear it so finally I've actually taken it to the tailor, I should get it back any day now and it'll fit me perfectly. But, you know, to be honest, I probably just shouldn't have bought it to begin with because that's an additional expense. But I always find it much easier to choose an outfit if there are less options. So in order to reduce the size of my wardrobe, something that I like to have in mind when I'm doing clear outs is, does this item fit me properly? It might have fit me properly when I first bought it, pre-pandemic, <laughs> for example. But if I don't feel great in it and it doesn't fit me in all the right places now, it's just time to say goodbye to those items and equally, if something is in the sale and it's a little bit too big or a little bit too small, just leave it, just walk away because there's absolutely no point bringing new things into a wardrobe if they're not absolutely perfect because nine times out of 10, you're just gonna reach for something else instead. Leading on from that, tip number three, as well as not buying things that don't fit you, another one that again sounds kind of obvious, don't buy things that don't suit you. <laughs> this is me teaching myself these lessons because if you watched last Sunday's video, I did a video on styling the least worn things in my wardrobe. Should I have bought those Chloe boots? No, I just love Chloe. And I have in my head this vision of becoming the all encompassing Chloe girl, but they're just not my style. So why, oh why did I buy not one, but two pairs of Chloe boots that just don't suit me. They obviously don't work for my personal style. They don't work for my wardrobe. And now it's just a little bit painful for me to think about how much money I've spent on those two styles that just don't suit me. <laughs> so the moral of the story is no matter how fabulous someone on Instagram looks wearing something or how many times you've read that that is the bag of the season or the dress of the season or the color of the season, if it doesn't suit you, if it doesn't work for your personal style, 
don't get it. It's just not worth it. Trends to me, I like to take with a little pinch of salt. And I mention this when I do videos that are all about trends because I like to know them. I like to maybe sprinkle them very subtly into an outfit if it works for me and it still looks like a Josie outfit. But I will never let my outfit or my shopping habits be influenced by trends. I look at people buying these like Bottega handbags or you know the shoes that are actually really ugly and I'm thinking yeah you've got so no offense to anyone that does this I'm sure I'm sure a lot I'm, I know that maybe some of you do but I see people making these huge investments and I'm like when you actually step back aside from the fact that it's got a label on it and it's trendy right now it's bloody ugly it's actually a really ugly item so are you going to pick up that item in a few years time when it's no longer trendy if the answer is no walk away <laughs> walk away i definitely think i've got better at this over the last few years and once again without sounding like a stuck record when i do invest in something it's always a timeless piece i tend not to invest in those trendy items something which i find helps keep my wardrobe a lot more manageable is having a one in one out process and i have to be quite strict with myself in certain product categories such as coats and i try to enforce this rule on charlie as well because he has got an entire room essentially dedicated to boots he has got more footwear than than the selfridges footwear haul it's absolutely ridiculous once again, I find it quite overwhelming if I walk into my wardrobe. As you can see, my wardrobe is absolutely massive, but it is very overwhelming if you have too many options. Too many options just kind of confuse you, they overwhelm you, so I'd actually rather have less options. So with certain product categories, for me, for example, it's coats. When I bring in a new one, I try to get rid of at least one. I am trying to cut down my collection, really hone in on those pieces that... I get a lot of wear out of. To me, it just seems like sacrilege having so many gorgeous pieces hung up in my wardrobe. There's something that I haven't worn for the last year or season. I either sell it, put it on a site to be rented out or donate it. So my next tip on how to be stylish is actually not to go on massive shopping spending sprees. I've definitely been in that place where I've looked at my wardrobe and quite a lot recently and I've thought, oh my goodness, I have nothing to wear and it is so tempting to go on a massive shopping spree and just impulse buy pieces which look fabulous on the rails or look fabulous on the model who's wearing them on Instagram but I actually find that that doesn't really work. I end up with a fragmented wardrobe, things that don't really work together and instead my goal is to have a really cohesive wardrobe where I can select a few different items whether I bought it this year or five years ago and for them to work really, really well together. A video that I did a few years ago was how to find your personal style and I think that's really worth watching. I might actually remake it um, now that I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> just make a more recent version because I think it is really important to know what your personal style is because then you can be really confident that you're buying things that are going to work for your wardrobe for now and for the future. So when I go shopping, I like to have in my head the things that I actually need, the things that are going to work for my personal style for a long period of time. And once again, it goes back to buying those pieces which are more timeless and more classic and not those trend-led pieces, which can be a little bit more tempting if you are going on a big blowout shopping trip. So try to bring newness into your wardrobe slowly, gradually and in a more considered way. One way that I'm going to be revitalizing my wardrobe for spring is by discovering new brands. Sometimes when I find that I'm in a bit of a style rut, which I have been lately, it's probably because I'm going to the same retailers, I'm picking the same things out of my wardrobe and it's just getting a little bit stale and a little bit boring. So something that you can do to revitalize your wardrobe and especially when it comes to a new season is to discover new brands. I'm actually not the best at this. So one way that I really like to do it is by going on some of my favorite aggregator websites, whether it's Farfetch or net porter Don't be put off thinking that these are only selling super expensive luxury items because actually I find that some of the price points are more premium high street than super high-end luxury. And instead of searching by brand, typically I'd normally just type in Zimmerman or Chloe and I'd only look at those pieces. But now I shop by category. So for example, this, keep referring to this, I'm a huge, huge fan of this gorgeous dress. Groundbreaking, I know, I typed in dresses. I typed in I think I typed in shirred dresses and I would never ever have found this brand if I hadn't have done that. And hopefully by doing that you might find things, you might find a brand that really works with your personal style, it could become a new favourite 
And also you're more likely to have things that no one else does, which is always nice. <laughs> So when I think about some of the most stylish people that I know and I look at their outfits overall, it really appears that they have got a kind of uniform. They have a certain style that they know works for them and they stick to it. So my next tip for vitalizing your style and overall being more stylish is to have a uniform. I think it's a huge misconception that you shouldn't buy new things similar to the items that you already own. In fact, I think that rule is complete rubbish and I actually find that some of the most worn items in my wardrobe are similar to other items that are very well worn in my wardrobe. If something works for you, stick with it. I know that I love floral dresses with a shared bodice and voluminous sleeves and I have got a few in my wardrobe. Does it stop me from buying more? No, because when I buy new ones I'm confident that they're going to work with my wardrobe because it's tried and tested. Equally with footwear, I think I've got about four pairs of Valentino Rockstead sandals because they're comfortable, they work with my outfits and I know that I'm going to get really good price per wear. So once you find those key pieces, don't be afraid for, of buying them in different colours, in slightly different design tweaks, in new colourways for the new season. This really helps to form those like basic building blocks for your wardrobe, another of my favourite uh, fashion expressions. And then you can really build on them whether you do want to bring in a little subtle trend piece or accessorise it in a different way for a different occasion. Having those core building blocks in your wardrobe really helps to build a foundation and stops you having those days when you feel like you've got nothing to wear. My final tip is very much less about buying something new but rather looking after the items that you've already got in your wardrobe. I think we all know that we need to get away from this whole idea of throwaway fashion so it's more important than ever that we really cherish the items that we already own, look after them, mend them, make sure you're reading the washing instructions, steam your clothes, iron your clothes, mend your clothes. The most important thing for me is getting the most wear out of the items that I have chosen to invest in. Looking after your clothes of course helps them to last longer and makes you look and feel better when you're wearing them. So if you haven't, I would recommend investing in a steamer, whether it's a handheld or if you've got room for a um, stand-up steamer, it makes so much difference. Don't be afraid of investing in a tailor take your clothes to be altered, take them to be mended, mended, meant, mended. <laughs> Get that vanish soap out if you've got some foundation marks on the top of your, on the tops of your white shirts. And I say this all the time, but just have one of those days where you just try loads of things on. I find this the most amazing way of really falling back in love with my own wardrobe, remembering what I've got. And when you find outfits that you love, take a picture of yourself wearing that outfit on your phone. So on those days when maybe it's an early start and you just can't think about what to wear, have a look through that photo album and you'll be spoil for choice with outfits that you don't need to go and buy anything new for because they're already in your wardrobe and if everything is steamed and ironed and clean then you literally have your entire wardrobe to choose from. I had so many items in my wardrobe that were just sat there crumpled and creased, maybe had a stain on them and last week I pulled them all out and gave everything a little bit of TLC and in the process tried them on and remembered what fabulous outfits I can create with those items. So it really helped to kind of freshen up in my head the outfits that I can pull together for spring. So darlings, that's my kind of brainstorm of a few top level tips, how to be stylish, how to revitalize your wardrobe for spring. Please let me know what kind of fashion videos you'd like to see over the next coming weeks. Would you like to see a spring trend video? In my upcoming vlogs next week, you'll be seeing a few new pieces that I've bought into my wardrobe, a few amazing sale pieces, which I think are going to be sticking around in my wardrobe for a very long time. But yeah, I definitely want to bring back the Sunday fashion videos. So please let me know what you'd like to see from me. I'm taking requests if you enjoyed today's video a little bit more tips focused rather than product focused then do give this video a thumbs up that really helps me to know what you guys love and thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed please do and I'll see you in my next one Bye.